Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie from Pocket of Preschool and tonight we are talking all about fun activities you can use with simple ice cube trays from the dollar store because they're simple, they're easy, you can get them super cheap, you can give each other own. But let me tell you really quick what's at the top. So there's a link to my blogs, my TPT store is there, and there's also a list to my favorite things on Amazon, because I basically kind of use the same thing like week in and week out. Um, these are literally things I just pull off my shelf and just use them over and over and over. So, all right, so I want you to tell me in the comments, because we, we, we need to learn from each other too. Tell me in the comments, what is your favorite activity, um, favorite ice cube tray activity? Like what's your favorite thing to do with them um, if you bust them out in your classroom? So hopefully you'll learn some from your um, teacher buddies tonight and then you'll learn a couple, maybe a new one or two um, from me. Where do you get them? So ice cube trays. Um, you can get all different ones. You can get them at the dollar store, which is my favorite place. You can get them at Target, you can get Walmart. Um, you can get like your standard one, like white ice cube trays. Um, you could probably even honestly ask families if they have old ones they want to donate. Um, since a lot of um, fridges have ice makers in them now, so you can get like white ones, you can get colored ones. I know. Like the Dollar Tree has them during different seasons. They're different colors. And I like them too because the Dollar Tree ones, you can stack. Whereas like these are like old school ones. They don't stack. They like stack for the fridge. These stack for kind of math and um, literacy activities. Um, so these are great Dollar Tree. Um, sometimes you can find shaped um, ice cube trays, like either the plastic ones or the silicone ones. And those sometimes you can find at Michael's or Walmart as well, or sometimes the Target Dollar Spot, which we all love. And then these two are, we love these. These are like mini ice cube trays. The bottom is silicone. They can push on them to get the things out, which is great fine motor. And um, these are Walmart during, Walmart and Dollar Tree, usually spring, um, springtime they usually have them. Um, so yeah, so be on the lookout for these, because I literally have these in my math center they are out all year long. I have these right next to, this is literally off of my math shelf. Oh, here it is, sorry, I have these out. <laughs> um, but I usually have some pom-poms on the shelf and I keep the tweezers right on the edge. Um, and then these are kind of next to it. So that way they can, um, it's kind of an open-ended activity so you can have them out, but I'm gonna show you some fun things you can do um, for table time too. And everybody's, I'm loving all your ideas in the comments so far too, by the way. Okay, so the basic like thing that probably most of us do, I would say with these are, you put out some pom-poms and you put out some tweezers and the kiddos are literally just transferring them over. Big ones, little ones, um, whatever size. These are some pom-poms. I like these because they're different sizes, they're different colors. Um, some are um, textured, like I have a sparkle to them. I got these on Amazon. Um, but literally, just great, fine motor. My kids, my kids, my students would do this at the beginning of every year. Some would do it all year long and they would be happy and content just transferring them. And that is that is awesome, because it's really, really great fine motor work. These are Gator tweezers. They're my ultimate favorite tweezers for three, four, and five year olds, because they're small, and they pinch really nicely. Um, they don't have to press too hard, but they do have to use some strength for them. Um, these are from Amazon. They're learning resources. They will look like a little gator. Um, but you can use any tweezers you have. These like handy ones, these are from like, I think Walmart. Um, but you can switch it up to put different tweezers out for different months. I know some, I saw some last year that were like mittens during um, like winter. Um, so yeah, so just, this is like a basic activity you can put out um, all year long. And what kids will do with them is the one thing they do first always is they will make patterns. So they will put them in once they are done just transferring. Um, what I have observed is kiddos will just naturally make patterns. So they're perfect because they're in a row, so they don't wiggle around. So like red, green, red, green, red, green, red. 
So they're perfect for making patterns. And you can put out a prompt on the table um, and says, you know, today for um, table time. And these are great because you can put one out at every chair. And I, I do this in the morning sometimes. Um, I would put one of these out at every chair because I have a, a class set of these. Um, these I don't. <laughs> um, so I'd put these out at one at each chair. And I would just dump the pom-poms in the middle of the table and then put a pair of gator tweezers on the top and that would be the activity. So I would say as they sat down, hey, today we're making patterns. Can you make a pattern in your ice cream tray? And it's great for table time for that. Patterns are super fun in here. Another fun thing to do is just put a dice out. So they would have a tray and a dice and they roll the dice. One, two, three, four, five, six. They need to get out six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then, whoops, <laughs> these little ones stick together. So they would put six then in their tray. And then they can count to check. And then they can roll again. And we're gonna, oh, I got two. That's a nice number for Facebook Live. And then they would just keep filling them. And then when their whole thing is full, they can dump it out on the table. And what's really fun about these big ones, they have to pull them out, which is great, great pincer um, for developing that pincer grasp and um, the, that just those, the finger strength. And um, when they are grabbing these out too, if you notice, they have to turn their wrist. Um, so it's great for wrist strength too. Um, so somebody's asking about the pom-poms. How do you clean them? Um, you can clean pom-poms. I know some people are using sprays. You can also wash pom-poms. I would, depending on the kind, um, like your typical regular pom-pom, you can wash them. If you don't believe me, try and wash just like a handful and then leave them out to dry. Because um, I know a lot of people use pom-pom for water play and then you can reuse them. Now, if you're washing them every day, are they going to last? years and years and years, I don't know. Um, but right now we may just have to and we ha may have to get more pom-poms at the end of the year rather than um, reusing them. So those are some options to clean them. So you can spray them, like spread them out on the table and then do the spray or um, you can literally like wash them in the sink. So those are some, um, some options for you guys. So yeah, so they roll the dice and then they put them in. Um, you could also have two kiddos play where they each, like they sit on um, opposite sides or next to each other. One rolls the dice and then they put that many in. The other one rolls the dice and then they put that many in. They, it's like a race to see who can fill it up first or it can just be a race to fill your tray. Whoever fills it first um, then waits for the other person to fill it. That way no one wins. So it's totally, um, totally up to you. Somebody's asking about the silicone ones. Um, these silicone trays you can get at Walmart or Dollar Tree, and I'm sure you can find them on Amazon, but um, they're the cheapest in the spring at Walmart and Target. Or not Target, Walmart and Dollar Tree, sorry. <laughs> um, and I know if you join my Pocket of Preschool Facebook group, um, whenever these trays come back out, like literally everyone is posting about it to make sure everybody can go grab them because um, we, we love these trays. They're so much fun. Um, so make sure you join the group because when new stuff and the stuff we love comes back at Dollar Tree, if it's seasonal, um, you'll find out that way. So it's another fun reason to be in the group. Um, oh, and if you're trying to get into the group, make sure you answer the questions to um, join the group. Um, so, so far, it's we've said just filling with tweezers, which would be great fine motor. You can, they can make patterns in them or they can use a dice. And I know um, if you have three-year-olds, you don't have to have a dice with six on it. I made these homemade dice that's just like with a wooden cube and it just goes one, two, and three. And the other side is one, two, and three. So you could easily differentiate this activity. So, um, you know, have the name tags out at the table. Um, they find their name tag and they would have the appropriate dice for them. Um, so maybe some kids are using a dot dice with one, two, three. Some are using a dot dice with one, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe some kids are using a color dice. So they have to roll, um, roll, the, roll the dice and put in that color. So maybe they're working on colors. Or maybe, do I have any in here? Maybe. <laughs> 
I, I have my dice bucket from, this is literally, I just got it out of my math center because um, I have all the different dice in there um, that they can use during centers. Um, or you can use a dice with numbers on it for the um, your higher level kiddos. So you could ha possibly have four different levels of kiddos playing the same game just at their own um, individual level. And if your admin comes in or your boss comes in, you can be like, um, do you see how they're all using different dice? That's how I'm um, differentiating instruction for um, morning table time or small group or whatever it may be. Um, so yeah, so the color dot dice you can find on Amazon um, or you can literally, um, before they came out with these, I took just like um, wooden cubes and I colored them. Or you can use those, you know, these little dot like stickers. You can use that and make your own too. You don't have to like buy the pretty ones. Um, so yeah, so you can make your own. You can DIY it like I do, or you can grab them. So, so many, so many options. Um, and the, the dot dice are linked in my Amazon list, which is at the top of this post. So you can see all these great activities. They're all doing fine motor. Um, if they're using tweezers or if they're not because they pick them up and put them in, Again, they're using that pincer muscle, those pincer muscles, and um, hand and wrist strength doing that. So we got just um, filling them. We have making patterns. We have counting. Um, you can also, if you want to make an addition, if you are a kinder teacher, um, you can do two dice. So they would roll two dice, five plus five, and then they could say 10, or they could you know count. So they could be doing addition. So you have color, um, you can have them counting, or you can have them adding. So many, so many ways you can play with these simple, simple ice cream trays. Um, and you guys, I guarantee you, if you put out these trays with two dice and some pom-poms or a dice, that will be so much more fun and so much more meaningful. They will grow and develop those skills so much faster if you do play-based activities where it's hands-on and it's fun and it's exciting and they can talk to each other um, and they can um, have conversations about math with each other um, during play. They will learn so much more than a worksheet on the table for table time. So put out some ice cube trays. All right, so we have that. And that's just with an ice cube tray with literally nothing in the bottom, nothing. And you can switch it up by using these you can put out themed ones with the like colored pom-poms to match whatever theme you're doing. So if you're doing outer space or 4th of July or voting, you could put out these and they could put pom-poms in. You can also have them, um, some other fun things to put in them would be mini erasers. So um, here's some pumpkins I have. So if you're doing a pumpkin thing or maybe you're doing apples are coming up, so we have, I know all of us have all these little mini erasers. Um, put those on the table and they, with the dice and they can roll the dice and they can put the mini erasers in. And I also, um, I forgot to tell you this way too. So some kids, they play with their own way, right? I know uh, some kiddos will put one in each one um, and develop that one-to-one -one correspondence. Or if you want the game to last longer, what you could do is you could tell them to roll the dice. We're gonna pretend I got two and they can put it two in one container. So that way they have to roll that many times for their game to be over. So it'll last longer. Um, obviously, if you have three-year-olds, you really want them to do that one-to-one -one correspondence. Um, but if you have kinder kiddos um, and you're using these mini erasers, um, putting each roll in one little cube um, will make the game last longer. And they have a bigger attendance span, so that's something they could do too. Um, and you don't have to use food mini erasers. Um, I have these pet ones from Oriental Trading. These work too because you guys look, as they're putting them in, um, they're still just putting them in. And it works for any theme and it's another great way to use mini erasers. And mini erasers are easier to clean than pom-poms um, and they can totally use tweezers with mini erasers. <laughs> Um, and mini erasers you can like so wash and dry a lot easier than pom-poms. So mini erasers actually might be a better bet right now with all the COVID um, craziness. So, and if you want mini erasers, I know Amazon has some, Oriental Trading, that's where I got these pet ones from, um, or um, Target Dollar Spot, and then Walmart is starting to carry them too in their seasonal section sometimes. 
Um, oh, another fun filler to do would um, be just little pony beads. And if you have, obviously, if you have three, so they're not going to be able to pick these up. Um, but if you have kiddos with really um, a stronger fine motor, you could do pony beads. You could also do eyeballs. I'm, kids love playing games with eyeballs. So they can just put one in each one or whatever math game they're with the dice they're playing. Those are a fun filler. Um, even counters are really fun. So if they're rolling the color dice, they get orange and they can put an orange dinosaur in their tray. And then these are, again, counters are easy to clean um, too. So, and they can make patterns with these um, just like they do with the, um, with the pom-poms. So counters, beads, mini erasers, the sky's the limit, really anything that'll fit in here, you can put in the ice cube tray. Um, so, which is super fun. And I know sometimes, um, like the silicone ones that are seasonal, like usually Dollar Tree has pumpkin ice cube trays that are um, silicone during um, Halloween-ish, and they're usually 10, so it's kind of like a mini 10 frame. Um, so how I wash mini erasers is I, like I would take, like let's say we use these, I would put them in a colander, dump all the mini erasers in a colander, um, do like the soap water bleach with them, and then um, let them air dry the next day and they are good to go. Because I use um, mini erasers for sensory play all the time. Um, so they're, they wash and dry super, super well. Another fun filler to do, and I'll tell you more activities too in a minute, are these gems. I know these are some Halloween ones um, that I found at Hobby Lobby, I think. They're like little ghosts and pumpkins and witch hats. So you could even put um, gems in your ice cube, tra ice cube trays for math. So they could roll the dice, two, and they could get out one, two, and they could put it in um, their ice cube tray. So again, just mixing up the manipulatives um, for your different themes will make counting and adding or just developing that one-to-one -one correspondence so fun. And when you change out the manipulative, you, it's like it's kind of like a new game, right? Oh, another fun one that my kiddos love are these bingo chips. So I love bingo chips because they're great to clean up, <laughs> and kiddos love them. Be, I'll put them in a different tray for this one um, because they get to clean them up with the magnet wand. So they roll the dice two, and they could count out two one two. And then they could put it in their tray. And then let's say I filled up my tray and I counted all of them. They get to pick it up with the magnet wand and then put them back in. And look, you guys, look at all this great fine motor action happening as I'm cleaning up. So, and we all know since our kiddos have been home, maybe your kiddos are still home, they're not in person yet. Um, they're going to need a lot of fine motor work when we get, whenever you get them back. Um, so the, this, again, whatever manipulative you have as they clean up, um, it's great fine motor too. And then these bingo chips, um, are from Amazon and this one is Lakeshore, but you can use any magnet wand that you have in your classroom. Um, and then if you want to sneak in some shapes and if you want to, um, do shapes, you can make so these are shaped dice I made when I first started teaching. I used, again, a wooden cube and I cut um, different shapes. You can buy shaped dice, shape dice now on Amazon, but I DIY'd it and I made my own. So they can roll the dice. And of course that's the one that, that's the one button I don't have, but like rectangle and they could find the rectangle and put it in there. So. And you can just tell them, oh, when you, if you roll a rhombus or a diamond, whatever you call it, we don't have that shape button, so find a different one. And I would dump these out on the table so they can find them easier, but these are just shape buttons from, again, Amazon. Um, um, sometimes I've noticed the Dollar Tree has had these a couple times, um, but yeah, you guys don't have to have like fancy things. Like you can make your own shape dice with stickers and cover it in tape like I did. 
because I think I've had this like 12 years and it's still going strong. <laughs> you don't have to have all these fancy things. Um, DIY stuff works awesome too. Um, and if you, if you buy shape buttons, there's so many things you can do with shape buttons. They're so great. You could also roll, well, if you don't have a shape dice, you can still roll a color dice and they can go orange and then they pick one out and they have to say the name of the shape. So orange star. And then they have to roll the dice again. Yellow. You need to find a yellow one. Yellow oval. And they can put it in. Or, again, they can use the dice. And I got two. One, two. <laughs> I got a flower and a heart. And they can put it in. So you don't have to have a shape dice. Use what you got in your classroom. Um, and just mix it up and have fun. And you, your kids will learn and grow so, so, so much. Um, so that's kind of math. Now let me tell, oh, one more math thing. So here's another math. So you know these little circle, um, the little circle dots, like sticker dots? You can put these in the bottom of a tray um, and you can put, I, um, so some of them, I, they were white and I colored them because I have never been able to find a purple or a pink one. Um, so I put the ones I had in and then colored the other ones. And now they can sort by color. So they can just use the tweezers, grab the pom-pom, and put it in, and they can just literally match colors. So this is perfect if you have little learners, um, if you have kiddos that are maybe working on colors. Um, so yeah, so just match the colors. So again, you can have different activities out for different kiddos. Um, and it will meet the needs of all the kiddos. And even if they do know their colors already, they're still sorting and matching um, and developing that fine motor strength by picking up those pom-poms with the tweezers or their fingers. All right, so colors. And another idea you could do is you could also put um, stickers in the bottom with numbers. I did it with the letters. A couple of them, looks like one of them fell out. Um, so you can see at the bottom, I just wrote a super simple guys, took a Sharpie, wrote the letter on it, on the dot, and I put it in. Um, and then all you would need are letter manipulatives. So you guys know I love my lacing letter beads that we, I hardly ever use for letter lace, for lacing. Um, but so they could pick a letter. I have A, I'm going to put it in a, and then they can talk about what sound does A make? What are some words that start with A? So you can have those conversations. And they can just keep on matching. Oh, I don't have an O. Do you have an O? And they can start, you know, putting the ones back that they don't have. And don't feel like you have to have every letter because having this many out would be really overwhelming. You could also do the letters and their name. Um, and every, every, every spot doesn't have to have a letter dot on it. You could do like just the letters in her name and they could say, is this N in my name? No. And they could put it on the table. Um, and so instead of having just letter dots, put their name and then they would be like name ice cube trays, which would be really, really fun too, especially for back to school when they're learning um, their name or they could do their name or they could do a friend's name, um, which is really fun too because they love each other's names as much as they love their name. They do love their friends' names. Um, too. And these are great because you can like literally, I can't right now because I'm sure I'm on Facebook Live and I won't be able to get it, but because <laughs> that's what always happens to me. So you can just take the stickers back out because I never like push them down really hard and the kids do, but um, so you can get them out super easy, typically. Um, so yeah, because you can see they fall out sometimes and it's no big deal because you can just put one back. So you can do that with letters or you could even do it with numbers. And if you don't want to put the stickers on the bottom, I didn't make a number one on purpose because you can use, if you have small magnet letters, they fit in there too. These, I don't know where I got these from. These are just some small ones I have in, on hand in my classroom. Um, but I know like Dollar Tree or Target Dollar Spot sometimes has smaller magnet letters, um, magnet, magnet numbers. <laughs> and then so you could put them, they could put their magnet numbers in the bottom and then they could count out that many. So I have three, I need to put three in the three. I 
probably backwards. One, two, three. And you can use mini erasers or little. Um, Hobby Lobby has these really tiny pom-poms that are super cute um, that I like to use. So you can do that too. So put a magnet number in and you don't have to do it. Just put them on the table and they can put it in. And so they pick a number, count out that many and put it in. So little prep for you and then they get to clean it up and put it all back. Super, again, our, these activities you guys don't, I think sometimes we make our lesson plans so much harder than they need to be because we're like, we need these amazing activities. And you guys, ice cube trays with some letter beads is awesome enough. And you can, you guys, I just thought about this just now. You could even put out the ice cube tray with the color dice and the color letter beads. They can roll the color and they can say green. And I'm gonna get a green letter R. R makes er sound. And they can put it in. So you don't even have to have letter dots in there. Why didn't I think of that last year when I had to put this out all the time? Um, so yeah. So the things we think about, right? So those are some fun activities with letters. What was the other one? Oh, you can also use these letter tiles. If you have letter tiles, these fit really well in. I'm, I try and give you guys options if you, like if you don't have these letter beads. And these are lacing letters. Um, they're learning resources. And they're my favorite. Um, but you could also use these like letter tiles. Again, I'm sure I got these on Amazon um, because they fit they fit in really well. So any small letter manipulative that you have that fits in there will work. You don't have to use letter beads. Again, just use what you have um, in your classroom. And these are, I think, oh yeah, these are lowercase and uppercase. Um, but these are great, and you can wash these too. These are nice because magnet, the magnet ones um, like rust if you wash them with soap and water. Um, the letter beads, so I got them off Amazon. They're learning resources, lacing letters. I'll put a link um, afterwards, but they're in my Amazon storefront too. Um, and then these are just the letter tiles. What else? Oh, so that's, that's, so you did a whole bunch of math. You can do counting, colors. Um, you can use all the different dice. You can do a shape dice. You can do shape buttons. You can match letters. You can also do a science experiment. And this one's really fun because I know Halloween's coming up. And even if you can't do Halloween in your classroom, they can still make a brew. So all you do is you give them an ice cube tray. And I'm gonna, I, I like using white for these because you can see the color better. But, excuse me, um, if you don't have white, like any color works. So, what you can do is, you, there's a couple options. So you can prep this ahead of time and you can put a little bit of liquid watercolor in here before. And again, this is just liquid watercolor. I like it because it's washable, um, but you could also put food dye in. And then this is just baking soda and then cover it up. I'm sure you guys know where this is going. And then this is just vinegar. So with a, a, um, Squeezer, what are these called? I, my brain's not working. <laughs> um, little with a little dropper, and these are learning resources like the silly ones. And then you can have the little um, science experiment of it exploding. And of course, you can't see my color. I put too much baking soda in. Where's that? There's the green. <laughs> it took a minute. Okay, so note to self, when you put your color in, you only have to use a little bit of this. I used, I got too much. <laughs> then they can squirt it. And what's really fun to do, if you want to do like a witch's brew, you can put some eyeballs out, or you know those eyeballs they have at the Target Dollar Spot, um, like the googly um, ones for Halloween, you can put those out. Um, and if you can't do, um, like in the spiders and bats, and they can make all the little potions in them, um, if you can't do that, you can do a birthday brew. So all you do is you grab some sprinkles and then they can just put some sprinkles in. Let's do a different color. Let's do yellow. And if you want them to do the color, um, what you can do is put it in before or 
Um, if you want to set it up ahead of time, you can just literally like sprinkle it in real quick. And then like I'll do red over here. And you can even squirt it on top. Like it, it doesn't have to be fancy. Like it just, it can be however you want it to be with the time you have. Um, because we all know, all of us know, like sometimes we come in and we have the best intentions of prepping something for the morning and a parent, a, a parent calls or a grandma calls and something happened or um, our admin walks in and, you know, they need to talk to us about something. Um, and especially with all this COVID craziness, I'm sure that's going to happen even more. So you can do this while the kids are sitting here too. Just take a little bit and sprinkle it in and then just squirt them on the top. And then they can put some birthday sprinkles in. And you can use any sprinkles, any kind. Um, and then they can do little birthday stew explosions. And what's great is, you can see I use the primary colors. They will, um, the colors will mix. And you can talk about how they mix. Here. There we go. <laughs> and it'll make orange. You'll be like, oh my gosh, we did not put orange in there. How do you think that happened? And you know, talk all the things. I'm just gonna do it faster since we're on Facebook Live. But yeah, but this not that so much fun? And one um, also tip I have for you is you can reuse these. So dump the liquid out if you put, if they put this out, like maybe you wanna put this on the tray too and maybe you're gonna let them put more in and they're gonna dump and pour and all of that. Um, once this looks like it has been used up, dump the liquid out because a lot of times there's enough baking soda in here they can squirt um, more vinegar in it and you kind of get like another another use out of it you can also put um gems in here so you could put some spiders in um some pumpkin some witch's hat if you were doing like the witch's brew um and then they can like mix it up all kinds of fun all kinds of fun stuff so they can pour more in, see what happens, all the things. Um, so it's just baking soda and then vinegar. <laughs> um, and then I use liquid watercolor, but you can use food dye too. Um, so, all right. I got blue all over my hands. So you can make birthday stew or like a witch's brew, whatever you want. And if you are very daring, you can let them like pour and mix and Mix all the colors, so totally up to you how big of a mess you want. All right, so I think that's it for tonight. Um, so we did a whole bunch of math, so we did counting and we did colors and we did making patterns and then we did our science, so all of this fun witches brew with vinegar and baking soda and liquid watercolor and then, or the birthday stew, whichever you want, or you can make pet stew, well that, oh, that would be bad. Let's not make pets do that would be bad. <laughs> Cooking some animals. Maybe you want to use the, um, if you have the counters that are um, the vegetables or the fruit, you could do like fruit stew or vegetable stew. Um, so that, and then we did the literacy where we put the, the letter dots in the bottom and they can match the letters. So there's so, so many things you can do. That's all I have for you guys tonight. So I hope you got something out of it. I hope you learned or thought, figured out something new you can do with your ice cube trays. If everybody's going to be going to the Dollar Tree tomorrow, say hi to their the other teacher friends if they're picking up some ice cube trays. Um, so yeah. So you guys have an awesome night. If there is a Facebook Live you would like to request, tell me in the Pocket or Preschool Facebook group and I will try and get one for done for you. You guys have an awesome night and I will talk to you soon.